Hickok 45, look what I finally have. Mini 30 from Ruger and Bud's Gun Shop. Thanks to Bud's, our major sponsor. I finally got my hands on one of these. You've requested these for so long and here it is. I've been shooting it. I'm gonna shoot a little bit for you right now again. We appreciate Bud's sponsorship and getting this to us. T&E Gun. Uh, what magazine should I put in it, do you think? I've got, let's see, 15 rounder, 10 rounder. No, no, 15, no, 20, excuse me, 15 and 10. Let's just put the 10 rounder in, okay? Because uh, you know, some places I know you folks are not allowed to have anything more than 10 rounds. So we'll make you feel better. This is 762 by 39. What do we want to shoot with these 10 30 caliber rounds? Why don't we just go ahead and try the red plate? Let's try the little red plate, the itty bitty one over there. Hey, not bad. That means I ought to be able to hit this watermelon on that post. You think? <laughs> I took the top off of him. Nice. That's fun. Got to chew him up a little bit. I tell you what, let's wash him off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let's put a little more fluid on it. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Uh, I got to hit the red plate again. That was cool. And let's put a couple on this paper target over here. You think I can hit it? I'll tell you what, I'll make it a real challenge. I'll back up a little bit. I've got the safety on. You can notice uh, where it is there. All right. Point blank almost. She's empty. Okay, 7.62 by 39. Is that 10 rounds? Seemed like it was more than 10. I guess it wasn't though. Oh, this is a neat, pretty neat gun, I have to say. Uh, I ha really have wanted to shoot one of these for a long time. I have never, let me think, I, I don't think I've ever fired one. I guess I've held one maybe in a gun shop somewhere, a gun shop. I have never fired that round through a Ruger Mini well, 30, you know, it's just like the Mini 14, but it's the Mini 30. So, cool little gun, take the mag out. And uh, we've got the M1A out here just to compare a little bit, because that's kind of part of its heritage. And uh, we'll uh, drag it over here and, and talk. This is the Mini 30, and it's uh, it shoots the round. Now, one thing we're gonna do here, uh, in addition to showing you the firearm, is kind of do a little ammo testing because uh, it can be a little sensitive with some of the steel cased ammo the the cheap stuff that we find is any ammo cheap anymore but uh now, so i've got some of the red army standard i've got uh both in steel case and in brass case i've had this around forever in fact this is what i was just firing i'm assuming that's boxer prime since it's a brass case and one thing I understand is that we get light primer strikes sometimes with the burden primed uh, steel cased ammo. And I have had that experience with both this Red Army, had one do it, and also with Tula ammo. Amazing. Imagine that. Tula ammo, the highest quality ammo out there, right? <laughs> well, we all shoot a lot of it though because it's cheap basically. Yeah, burden primed. I had a couple of those not fire. Okay, they fired on the second strike, but not on the first. But it was like one out of a magazine. I think in both cases, I've had maybe three or four and it was out of three or four magazines. So a little bit of a nuisance, a little bit of annoying, really annoying if you're in battle. I would recommend if you're going to battle with a Mini 30, maybe you want premium ammo, this Fusion. So, well, I mean, that's federal, but you know, some premium ammo, all right? So what I did was, being the genius I am, I had four magazines. I loaded one with the Fusion the one I just emptied was, uh, what did I say, the, you know, the Red Army Brass case. Okay, so we've, we sort of tested this. So as we do the video, we're, we're also running kind of a test. I have, and I can tell by the colors of the metal, that this is the Tula, and a little darker gray is the Red Army. Okay, all metal cases, part and primed, and, and uh, so, so we got that. So we'll fire, we may, I don't know if we'll fire more than these four mags or not, but 
we have four different ammos here represented and we'll see how they do. Like I said, I've had uh, three or four light strikes uh, with, with the steel case ammo, all right? That has happened and it's just gonna happen, okay? So uh, the UPS man is driving in, he's probably delivering some ammo and sometimes it's a heavy box. So we'll take a real quick break and help him and then we'll be right back at you, okay? Okay, was not ammo, unfortunately. Some other doodads for my wife or something. But anyway, UPS guy's gone. We can return to shooting. I didn't want to blow his ears out, you know. Thought it'd be the kind thing to do. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the Mini 30. We have uh, been uh, shooting a little bit here. And uh, while, I did, while we were cut there, I did reload that magazine with the same stuff I had shot. Okay, so as you know, there's no funny business going on here. This is the red... Uh, Army brass case stuff in case we need another magazine of ammo. They stuck that in there. Okay, we still got our uh, fusion, we've got our uh, Tula, and we've got our Red Army uh, metal case. Oh, yeah, and by the way, many of you are still obsessing and worrying and bothered about that 10 round magazine. Okay, we've done this to you before. What we do here is just work a little magic. Obviously, you know, this is the longest of the three, and that one's in the middle, and this is the shortest. What we do here at the compound is do some magic, and if we want this magazine to hold more than 10, all we have to do is put it right there, and it becomes the biggest magazine. How's that? Same with this one that used to be the middle. It can become the biggest magazine. How's that? Magic doesn't come easy, but, you know, we've got it here at the compound. Actually, they're all 20-round magazines, all right? We've done that to you before. There's just some optical illusion there, like me, an optical illusion I don't really exist. Uh, well, before I take another shot, let me show you why I have this baby out here, the M1A. Uh, you know, that's that's the the heritage here. We've got uh, this is called the the Mini 14 or the Mini 30. You know, and the M14 uh, M1A. Very very similar, aren't they? In a lot of uh, operation, your your bolt and the just just everything, the way it looks, the the way it operates. Just a very similar gun. Your safety. Uh, so it was obviously copied of uh, kind of the Garand, and the, it borrowed heavily, let's put it that way. Borrowed heavily, very heavily, from the Garand, the M14, all right? Kind of a, a miniature. You could say sort of a mini version of the M14. It's kind of what you have here. And then, uh, well, the Mini 14 at first, and then they came out with the Mini 30. These things have been around. The Mini 14, I think, came out in 73 or something, and then the Mini 30 later and they have uh it's a wildly popular rifle for all the criticism that the mini 14 and mini 30 get they're really popular uh the mini 14 more so than the 30 i guess but they work they are not maybe as accurate as an ar-15 this is probably not as accurate maybe even as an ak a lot of the ak's and ak's aren't known for pinpoint accuracy but they're pretty accurate they're accurate enough you know the what do I see? Uh, I mean, they're not exactly a minute of angle, you know, rifles. You know, you see numbers like six and even eight MOA, you know. Uh, but for standing and shooting at moderate distances, they, they do what most people need to do. The biggest criticism is after they've been shot a while, especially the Mini uh, 14, and maybe this one too, is as the barrel heats up, you lose accuracy. A little bit of accuracy, more so than with your AR-15s, your AK-47, you know, lines of rifles, okay? Now, they've done a lot better in recent years. They have improved them. You notice the heavier barrel on this one. This is just a 16, whatever, 0.5 inch barrel on this thing, but it's a fairly heavy barrel, and that helps in that regard. So if you were bench resting, you have a scope on it, you would, you would start to notice the maybe the accuracy deteriorating after whatever, 20, 30, 40, 50 rounds, if you're, if you're really comparing the groups, okay? For most shooting that most of us do, or hunting at moderate distances, this would probably be a great little rifle though. All right, so that is one of the criticisms. So we've, we've fired some of this already. Let's shoot, uh, let's shoot some of this Tula, okay? I will be surprised if uh, at least one of them doesn't suffer from a light primer strike. All right, safety's on. You know what? We have some cool stuff. To have. We set a record here. I think four watermelons. I'm going to go on over there. Uh, you see one sitting on that cinder block. I'm going to try to hit it without hitting the block, but uh, probably won't.
<laughs> I must have hit the block. Let's see if we can hit the bottom of it. Yep, there we go. The second round. Okay, so we'll take a look at it here in a second. I'll pull the bolt back and it will probably fire on the second shot. Good old Tula, Tula ammo. So again, if you're going to battle, make sure you have premium ammo. All right, should be long enough. Let's see if I can get the bolt back on that one again. See if that cocked it. I don't think it did. No. Oh well, let me jack it out. I'm not gonna fool with it right now. Well, I definitely cannot see. <laughs> Just can't see it too well. We're losing light here. Let's try that before it gets too dark. That two liter over there. Yep, that might be the same thing. Yeah. I know what I'll do. We need to need to wait though. Just to be safe. Make sure it doesn't fire before we mean for it to. Uh, and I've never had that happen, a delayed fire in the 50 years of shooting, but still you you want to do that just to be to be safe. Okay. So uh, like I say, you're gonna this is gonna happen with the, the cheap surplus ammo. It is one of the negatives, maybe one of the biggest negatives of this rifle. I like these things. I wouldn't mind owning one. This one will go back to buds. Uh, because I like the 762 by 39 cartridge a lot. I, I just always have, and that's why I have a couple of AKs. Uh, but one of the advantages to it is the ammo is still relatively inexpensive. You, you know, it's widely available. And uh, of course, an AK can shoot any of the stuff without any trouble, right? But the uh, Mini 30 is a little, little finicky with it, okay? So let's, uh, I want to use that same round. Bring it back far enough to cock it. And, well, I'm determined to do that. <laughs> back in the magazine, try to keep it from coming out onto the ground. You can see the primer hit it pretty well there. All right. I predict it will fire this time. I might miss, but I think the bullet will go out the barrel. I'm gonna tell you. There we go. I'm assuming the windage is pretty good on it, uh, so I don't know. Uh, the plates and different things were able to hit okay. There we go, last round. So you have that a little annoyance with your uh, your cheap ammo. So be aware of that. That was Tula. Imagine having trouble with Tula. Let's try this Red Army. All right, Red Army. We have a two liter or two that have not been addressed yet. Let's try to avoid hitting steel behind them. <laughs> ah, fun. And a watermelon. A little one. <laughs> oh, some pots. Well, look at that. Just put a hole through it. What about that cinder block? Nice. Click. We'll assume it's empty. Well, we won't either. It's not empty. So we have a similar situation with the Red Army. Like I said, I had at least one out of about every magazine I fired uh, with, with this cheap stuff. Okay? So, I don't know if that would... Uh, prevent you from wanting one of these if you wanted one it, you know it really would not me necessarily I would probably try uh, a lot of the different surplus uh, types of ammo and find the one where I, I get the, f the fewest 
a number of light strikes. I also uh, read uh, somewhere on a thread that there's, I think you can replace the, the spring, uh, I guess the hammer spring with a wolf spring, and it'll hit harder and solve that problem. But then someone else was commenting how it's hard on the uh, firing pin, so I don't know, I would investigate that. So uh, if you just want a, a rifle that is never going to have a problem with the ammo, you know, the cheap ammo, uh, you probably want an AK. But uh, all right, I think that's long enough. I'm determined though to shoot that round. Let's see if I can get this thing ah, back. Yeah, that can do it. Not that skilled. Yeah, I think it hit it pretty hard. It needs second strike capability, doesn't it? <laughs> like some handguns have. I would take care of that. Sure would. Oh, now I remember what I was shooting at. How about that cascade container there? Now it will fire this time. I tell you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's put a couple more on this target. I think it might shoot a little bit left, low left. Feels good. Uh, but now it's probably. Yeah. Okay, so with the, let's go ahead and try this fusion. No, we have a round in there. Sure do. So it's not cocked, so I can't put the safety on. But we'll try the, uh, the fusion and uh, maybe even a little more of that just to verify that the problem is with the steel cased ammo, uh, bird and primed ammo. All right, so if you have a rifle like this for home defense, go out and shoot all the junk you want, but I would keep something something good in it uh, for defense. All right, so I guess that's long enough. Let's uh, put that back in there. Put it in the chamber, safety on. And after that, we'll be going to Fusion. Okay. I think we're in there. Yeah, we're okay. All right. Now, again, it will fire. Let's put one through that tank. Okay. Always goes on the second strike. Now we're shooting Fusion from Federal. I was gonna, oh no, I was gonna shoot that tank over there. <laughs> I love it. Let's put a couple more on this target. I can see the sight too well. <laughs> Barrel's getting hot. Getting hot. There we go. Well, let's go ahead and shoot this watermelon. All right, put some uh, fusion on it. Whoa! <laughs> Boy, talk about shredding. I wonder how many I have left. Let's uh, ventilate the burn barrel a little more. <laughs> so, as I suspected, no problems with uh, boxer prime, better ammo. And just again to confirm that, let's shoot a couple more. This is the Red Army brass case then boxer primed I'm assuming safety on ears on and let's go across the hill oh that barrel's hot can't see the sights too well yeah okay right on Just throwing rounds. Let's throw a couple more on this. <laughs> so all those fired. <laughs> so that was part of what I wanted to do. The experiment with all those uh, different sorts of ammo that I have at least. And uh, see what works and what doesn't. Uh, boy, that thing is hot. That barrel is very, very hot. Mini 30. Uh, I don't know what else I can make up about it. 
It's, uh, it comes in different configurations. This one runs around a thousand bucks, I believe, at least the MSRP. I forget what it was at Bud's when I ordered it. Was, it might have been like nine or 950, I don't know. But I think the MSRP was just over uh, 1,100. So 1,100, as you know. Folks in Kentucky up there is around 1,000, and uh, you get it for a little bit less than that, I'm, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, they're, they're nice, right? And the, and the story is out there. There's no big secrets about it. People, uh, if you check around the internet, the conversations about these, you, you learn exactly what you just saw here in live living color, you know, with the ammo that's uh, not as reliable and the ammo that is reliable, just good old brass uh, boxer primed ammo. It tends to be more expensive though. Yeah, so you got that to, to weigh and consider. And then as the barrel gets really hot, you know, accuracy uh, is, is going to deteriorate more on a Mini 30, Mini 14 than it will on an AR, and I think even an AK, pretty sure. Uh, it's usually it's compared with the uh, AR-15 rifle, you know, the 223-556. But then again, they're generally accurate enough. I mean, people love these things. You know, I've got it in 556, and I really like it. I will never let it go. I, I, I like this gun. Uh, you notice we didn't have reliability problems other than <laughs> primers issue as far as feeding and everything. Uh, it's a pretty good design, you know, it's lasted a while. And so uh, anyway, that's kind of the price range and you know the pluses and the minuses of these things before you get into them. And another plus we haven't talked about, I guess, is it is more of a uh, politically correct rifle. When you, when you think about it, that just looks like your granddad's gun in a lot of ways, doesn't it? His M M1A, his Garand, put a five or 10 round magazine in it, especially like you thought I had, okay? Because you're so gullible. Uh, and you know, and of course this one's even black and it doesn't look too threatening. But you get one of these in a wooden stock and maybe a magazine is not quite as long and you have a rifle that looks really harmless. You know, it, it wouldn't even scare an anti-gunner you know uh but yet you know what you got so pretty neat pretty neat little gun and uh i'm glad to actually get a chance to try one out uh so uh it, she's great it feels good shooting there's something about an m14 both that one and and this or the mini 14 mini 30. Uh, i don't know the recoil impulse when you shoot the things uh it doesn't have the very best trigger in the world so a little gritty but it's not horrible uh, they I don't know, there's just a neat pleasant feeling of it. The recoil is there, but it's very mild, pleasant shooting, yet you're shooting a 30 caliber round, kind of like you get with the AK. Just a nice shooting gun, nice caliber. Okay, Mini 30, that's about all the lies I can tell you about it. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page, as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this, because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it, okay? Thank you.